Rarely has mankind hesitated to eradicate the creatures that stand in the path of his conquest. <laughs> Greetings, ladies, gentlemen, government agents, high-ranking officials of PETA, and anybody who might be listening. This is Close Encounters of the Podcast Kind, episode 35. I'm here as usual, Tasker, and we got um, probably a place with a lot more cows than where I'm at. Nick? First off, yes, there are a lot of cows here. Second, That's adorable. I want... No, it's not. It's disgusting. They smell <laughs> like shit. <laughs> are they like... Next. like? Oh, sorry. No, you, you finish first. Well, I just wanted to say really quick, I'm going into this episode hungry. <laughs> and cow mutilation is the first step to creating beef. Yeah. I mean, that's what I do every time I go to the grocery store. I'm technically mutilating a cow. I'm just doing it afterwards. <laughs> and what I was going to say earlier, too, is, is it like adorable, like like ranch cows just like chilling? Or is it like those um, like those beef farms where it's actually really sad? Sad and depressing. I think there was a word for it, uh, the one we call in California. Um, my brother's wife's brother. Wow. Came up with the phrase uh, cowschwitz. <laughs> there are a lot of cowschwitzes out here. There's also oh, no. some dat cows out here, if you will. Dat cows? Dat cow? Oh, my God. Okay, sorry. The the joke fell flat. Dat cow is another popular. Okay, popular is a bad term. Dat cow is another <laughs> infamous. <laughs> concentration camp get it dat cow oh uh, okay i thought you were making a, a a dat boy reference that old meme from like no. a couple years ago no we're not talking about frogs we're talking about cows <laughs> so <laughs> we didn't put it together we're talking about cows today it's pretty exciting yeah but what about cows tasker what's the title of the episode cow mutilation which when you first pitched this idea to me i thought it was some like smut like gore fest gross bull dark internet bullshit but it ends up being actually being a very interesting case and a very mysterious case yeah it's huge in the ufo community it's huge it's it's one of our it's one of our last hopes of proof for alien existence as a community <laughs> But you know, before we really set the stage on this, I think we really need to get a, a firm look at the stars and our future. Um, and how's your horoscope? Well, today, everybody, as you all know, I'm a cancer to society. <laughs> um, <laughs> so here we go. Some new information about an interesting field could have you browsing the web and looking through books to learn more. Cancer. <laughs> Curious. This could involve law, philosophy, history, or spirituality. You could find so much that you want to take notes or make a lot of photocopies. Don't tire yourself out and try to keep track of time. You might miss dinner or get to bed very late. Wow. Did you do a lot of research on this episode? Making this? I did. this... <laughs> well, what do you wow. know? Like we said, it's it nails it on the head every time. I looked up a I, I looked at a lot of pictures of cow anuses, more specifically, <laughs> missing cow anuses. Oh. And um, I almost did miss dinner yesterday. So this is actually pretty spot on. Although I would say today it's a little off kilter because I would say more the last couple days, this would, uh, this would apply to me. Not this, not today, but it was close. It was close. Sorry. Train of thought just <laughs> had a bit of a special moment there. It's okay. We, we you know, we're all this. retarded. <laughs> that moment, you just kind of look off into space and your mouth just kind of like droops open. You're just like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was trying to remember what to win. I couldn't remember what to win. <laughs> if it's funny enough, we'll keep it in. We'll think about it. Offensive. Yes, very, very much so. So uh, it's surprising, though, that you might have actually missed dinner. That's not something you would normally do. No, no. And, and because I was doing this research, I was pretty hungry. I'm not going to lie. Everybody out there, I've already, we've already discussed the fact that I'm a carnivore. I only eat meat. So when I think of cattle mutilation, I just think of getting cuts of beef. So I was very surprised I almost missed dinner yesterday. Yeah. And actually, it's kind of relevant because uh, we did just uh, a minute ago just bring up PETA. Um, I'm sure you have some colorful thoughts about them with your carnivore lifestyle. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So PETA, um, if you're listening, now first off, I want you to go ahead and fuck yourself. All right. <laughs> Good start. There's no reason that humans shouldn't eat meat. All right. If I remember correctly, in the Bible, all right, God gave man dominion over all living creatures, including cows. All right. If I mean, I don't know if they were around back then. I'm assuming they did. I don't yes. base all my research off the Bible. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm just saying that, look, if I want to eat some meat, I'm going to eat meat. And if you're going to throw pig's blood at me because I eat meat, that's a little hypocritical and weird. All right. At least I'm not throwing pig's blood at people. So. True. And actually, pig's blood technically falls into your carnivore diet, um, your umbrella. So you actually could uh, get a nice little smoothie out of that. Yeah. See, PETA, that's how you that's how you help the animals. You don't waste what's already out there by throwing it on people's coats and stuff. You drink it. <laughs> Yep. Dang. And it seems like <laughs> whatever they do to attack you simply makes you stronger. Yeah. And that's because they're a bunch of weak vegans, dude. They don't have any vitamins in their body. They don't have any minerals. <laughs> they don't have any iron. <laughs> there was a, uh, I know this is kind of an old story, kind of old news, but uh, there was this whole thing where this uh, this one vegan lady was like, to, to prove that vegans aren't weak, she decided to climb Mount Everest and ended up dying on the trip. Yep. Yep, I uh, bet she brought a couple celery sticks as a snack, huh? Good for her. <laughs> Some ants on a log? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, enough about PETA, because if I keep going on about PETA, this episode will just turn into a, a hate speech. Well, let's let's reclaim it. Let's talk instead of PETA. We're now we're now talking about PETA bread, like the the thing that you can like wrap it with hummus. It's fine. I like gyros. So I'll eat it, but the problem is also I don't eat carbs, so that's also my enemy. Fuck. So no matter what, you're just gonna be mad. I'm just gonna be pissed off. Let's okay. <laughs> let's let's move past the pita because now I'm just mad and on two fronts. I feel, dude. I feel like the U.S. Dude, I'm fighting Japan and I'm fighting in on uh, in Germany. Um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what is your horoscope today, Tasker? I was actually the other night. I looked up my uh, there's uh, there's moon signs apparently where it's like. Your, your your actual like you know like scorpio is me that's like my sun sign which is like my actual personality and um there's your moon sign which is like your like emotional side um i don't have it with me right now so maybe we'll get into that next episode but i'll just read my thing um today your mind will be quick insightful and inspired your creative impulses should go a thousand miles an hour and ideas should pop in and out of your head like crazy most likely most likely, most likely. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I regressed to like my kindergarten self for like at least three seconds there. Um, yeah, yeah, most... yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good, buddy. I know exactly what you Thank you for the encouraging words. Most likely, you'll want to drop everything else and write down all your ideas. Make use of this inspiration while you can, as it may come in fits and starts. You could be surprised by what you produce. That's uplifting. It's uplifting, isn't it? Relevant? Aren't you working on a gig right now? I am working on a gig. I have not showered in three days. I am disgusting because I've been living in a cave. I have like family visiting and stuff. I can't even hang out with them because uh, I think I have until like this Saturday to like get it all done. And um, it's going pretty crazy. But see, yes, that is like, you know, it's it's artistic work, but it's not necessarily creative work that I'm doing right now. But at the same time, I am building up a lot of good mechanical skills that can reflect onto future creative work. So maybe this isn't necessarily good for today, but well, no, because it's saying you crave impulses may pop in and out and you might want to write them down. So maybe that's something I should consider today. That is something you should consider, Tasker. So I think the stars are trying to help you out with something. Remember? Remember? Yeah, I'll see. It's all and real. If, if I end up coming up with the... The idea that uh, gets me picked up and finally gets me a full-time job, well, then, you know what? Thank you, Horoscope, and thank you, Stars. Maybe I'll start believing in it a little bit more. There you go. You'll be a regular cosmic witch soon enough. <laughs> that is dope. I, I want that to be on my gravestone. Alex Tasker, cosmic witch. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, hello. Welcome. And welcome uh, back to the show in which one of the hosts only eats meat, like I've said. And as you yeah. can imagine... Uh, with today's episode, I'm already pretty hungry. 
Um, and of course, we are talking about cattle mutilation. Now, we will be going over the details commonly found at these mutilation sites, various stories of mutilation from around the world, and possible explanations for these incidents, even though we already know what it is. I mean, come on. If there's any question as to what is happening to these cattle, you're retarded. I mean, you're, 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 you're dumb. <laughs> Yellow card. Okay. All right. The manager just walked in and told me not to do that. <laughs> and by that, Nick's eyes rolled into the back of his head and just shouted, no, <laughs> no, don't say it. Don't say it again. <laughs> all right. So without further delay, let's grab our milking pails, get our hair and little pigtails and oh. head down to the farm and dive right into this cow udder of an episode. Now, really quick, um, I, I did discover, too, because I did some, like, half-drunk research last night, and by that, I mean barely any at all, and I did find that uh, cattle mutilation is also a WWE move. Uh, who, whose move is it? Is it, a, is it a general move, or is it somebody's signature move? Um, I don't know. I just saw a video. It says Brian Danielson cattle mutilation, and it's, like, oh. it's a hold where, okay, let me see if I can describe this properly, where... Um, it looks like he um, uh, he's like wraps his arms around. So he's like, oh, he's like almost like straddling him. So we're, we're already getting kind of cattle like and he puts his like arms around his the back of his neck and then flips over him. And it's really hard to explain. It looks really weird. Interesting. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. I thought you'd be interested in a bunch of sweaty men uh, grappling each other. I am. So don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> okay, so as far as this episode goes, let's start with the basics, right? Cattle mutilation, also known as bovine excision, which sounds like a sick death metal band name. I would, I would listen to the single. Right? Um, so cattle mutilation is the name given to the phenomena of mysterious deaths usually directed at cattle being, of course, cows and bulls. Now, I said usually directed at cattle because these mysterious deaths are not only happening to cows, but they are happening to a wide variety of animals around the world. And these animals include deer, elk, dogs, cats, pigs, sheep, horses, and many, many more. But you'll notice a trend, that these animals are either domesticated or they're ruminants. Interesting, right? Ruminants ruminant? are animals who graze on grass and walk on all fours. So like deer, c cows, that, those kind of animals. And I think they have like two stomachs. I don't know, man. Look, I'm not a zoologist. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the great thing about this podcast is like, we have to branch out. Like, what was it the other day? It was like marine biology. Now we're getting to zoology and uh, topography maybe. And, um, endocrinology i don't know yeah dude i mean at this point i deserve an honorary degree from multiple universities <laughs> in multiple fields uh yes i mean c's do get degrees and uh also degrees don't mean anything anymore amen to that amen to that dude yeah i said with a heavy heart <laughs> well never mind all right so <laughs> yeah something about the art degree something about yep. that yeah, I'm I sorry. I won't say anything. <laughs> Get the fuck out. I'm working. I'm working. Okay, I know. I know. Now, the reason it's called cattle mutilation is because a heavy majority of these deaths do happen to cows. Let's just put it out there on the table, right? A majority of these are going to be cows or bulls. Well, yeah, so, if we're thinking... Oh, sorry, but... Uh, no, yeah. If we're thinking, you know, especially for... Because I know, of course, I mean, I'm going to address the elephant or the cow in the room that um obviously the angle here is that aliens are the ones doing it that's uh is that am i wrong is that your perspective on this yeah no 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 i think no i think that they're dying in natural causes <laughs> okay so when we think of abduction what's the first animal we think of is cows so it's that whole because i remember at first when i heard the title cattle mutilation i found out it was all animal mutilation i'm like it's fucking stupid like but it's like you know it's just the mysteriousness and with the, what we've already experienced and stuff, you know, as I said, culture influences information. Yes, but also information can influence a culture and we'll get into that a little bit. Ooh, getting juicy today. Yeah, buddy. God, I'm so hard for this. 
So what exactly makes cattle mutilation different from any other form of livestock death? Well, you know what, Tasker, I need you to first off calm the fuck down. Are you uh, calm? Um. <sighs> okay, yeah. Okay, good, because Uncle Nick is going to tell you all about this shit. We're going to deep dive into this, and it's going to be gross. I mean, I've left out some of the finer details for everybody's sake, and also because I'm hungry. So, yeah. <laughs> but we are going to dive in, so calm down, Tasker. Here we go. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad we're getting a little bit of blood and gore in this podcast. I feel like we've had a, a, a stark lack of that. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to I'm trying to get more gore in there because it is 2020. People are um people are just just desensitized, right? Yeah. So we're stuck in our you homes, you know. Throw it in. Yeah, why not? First, let's talk about the obvious, the mutilations. So you'll notice in these cases, very particular parts of the body are missing. Some of these body parts include eyes, ears, genitals. <laughs> Ah, that's a funny word. <laughs> it's very silly. It's like like balls, balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we keep this in, you you we are definitely five years old. Okay, good, good. <laughs> and maybe Netflix will give me a show then. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, ah! <laughs> <laughs> saved it. You saved the bit. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Zing. <laughs> Genitals, tongue, jaw. Lymph nodes, certain internal organs, and of course, the anus. <laughs> the whole anus. <laughs> uh-huh. You said you had to look at quite a gallery of uh, photos of that just to make sure, you know, that your research was uh, founded on real stuff, right? Yes. And I also, okay, look, when I was looking at these pictures of these, because there are, there are a bunch of them out there. Anybody out there curious as to what this looks like? Google it. Google cattle mutilation, search the images, look at the anus. It just completely cored out like a pineapple. All right. I'm going to look um, it up right now. I have never seen these before. So you, you could get a live reaction of it. So. Get a live reaction of the anus. So just cattle mutilation or should I type in cattle mutilation anus? Yeah. Type that in. You might, you might not be on a lit, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Type in anus. Yeah. Is this something? No, this is for, for podcasts. I, I don't have to be on incognito. <laughs> Famous last words, huh? Yeah, you're on the list. Okay. Uh, so far, not so bad. It's kind of sad, but it's blurred out. Oh, that's messed up. No, I found some unblurred ones that I'll have to send them to you later. It's kind of sad. Maybe it's the anus that's really throwing it off. Maybe I'll let me. It looked gross from what was blurred out, but uh, let's see. No, this one just has a hole in it. This one's just, oh, that's creepy. Uh, that's the one where it's like half of its face is gone and it's just like, mm. you can see the skull. Um, yep. It's kind of like, uh, that one scene in Breaking Bad. Um, oh my God. That's, um, <laughs> wow. That, that, that butthole is pretty blown out. There you go. That is, that is non-existent. And they kind of went a little overboard on that one too. Um, oh, this one, they put a, a pentagram on. That's not nice. Yeah. Um, it's gross, but not the worst thing in the world. Oh, and here's the WWE move. So you, you can you guys can see that, too, if you Google it. Good job. All right. <laughs> so the animal is not is usually not wounded or mutilated in other parts of the body. Only these specific areas, which is something to note. And another peculiar aspect is the fact that he, that there is no blood on the scene around the animal's wounds or in the animal most of the time they're completely drained of blood and they can't find blood traces anywhere and these wounds seem to be cauterized usually with burnt flesh around the wound itself and i'd say it's probably about a medium medium rare from the pictures i saw wow so yeah you definitely got something on your mind huh yeah yeah I mean, you think okay well tell me that you don't think of charred cow flesh and you the first thing that doesn't come to your mind is how you ha- sir how do you want your steak cooked you know what I mean? Bruh, I, I actually had a fat steak last night, so um, I've got nothing but positive vibes in my brain right now. Uh, good, good. Fuck PETA. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now, oftentimes, there are burn marks around the body, and this includes burned vegetation and soot on the ground. Interesting fact that I'm going to bring up later. <laughs> uh Another interesting note is that there are no struggle marks around the body. 
and this signifies that animal attacks are an unlikely explanation because if this mutilated animal was in fact intact by another animal, there would surely be signs of some sort of scuffle and also don't call me Shirley. Ugh. Well, I, I do appreciate that reference because that is one of my favorite movies. But so that means that no matter what happened here, it was a quick death or one might even say, well, we're not, I, I won't get fully into uh, explanations because I know we're getting to that later, but it seems like either they were paralyzed or they were killed immediately. Depending. Exactly. On, yeah. You, you hit it right on the nose. So, and we're going to get into it. The only marks or impressions sometimes found around the body is surrounding the head. So underneath the head, there are deep impressions in the ground showing that if the animal was struggling, like Tasker said, only its head could move and the rest of the body was most likely paralyzed somehow. Yes, nailed it. Look, you dude, you, you, I'm rubbing off on you. The f- now you're thinking like now you're thinking like a UFOologist. Now you're thinking like somebody who looks at aliens for a living. Oh, How does it feel? Disgusting. It feels gross, but also I it, I think it would be fun to, when I reach old age and I start going all senile and like freaking out. Um, it would be fun to rebuild my personality by like starting our podcast from episode one and just watching the <laughs> my character development as we go through it. I'm gonna turn you into a I'm gonna turn you into a fucking crack crack pod soon enough all right so don't you worry about it <laughs> we will see well we'll check back on episode 100 and then 150 every 50 episodes we'll check in on my uh my mental state and how much of a crackpot i am that's right okay everybody everybody listening remember tasker is malleable all right he is like he is like a sculptor's clay <laughs> I, what can i say I, I feel like um i feel very fluid Good. All right. Open-minded. See, you're opening your mind. Very good. All right. I I love it. I love to see that. (laughs) Little by little. Little by little. So another thing to keep in mind is the fact that there are no tracks or footprints ever found around the mutilated animals. And we will bring this up in the theories later on. Yep. Trying to keep myself shut up because I know we're going to talk about it. Yes, Tasker is a rare to argue with me. And guess what? You have to sit there and listen to all this. You have to sit there and learn something. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, see, that's why you told me to take that deep breath earlier because you knew, you knew, and it's you were right. I really do. I'm trying my best to not go off on this. And I specifically made this outline where there's no way you could reference an anime, so you don't have that under your belt either. Hmm. Well, they did throw a cow in Attack on Titan, and it was a very, very tough weapon. A tough weapon, huh? A tough yep. weapon. Yep. So that's so um, they ran out of they didn't have any creativity juice left and they decided to use a cow as a weapon. Is that what I'm getting from this uh, this animating company? No, actually. Am I wrong? Actually, maybe they throw a giant cart at somebody. Well, dude, anything at like a velocity of like if a giant picks it up and chucks it across the air, doesn't matter what it is. That's going to be very damn destructive. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about attack on Titan. (laughs) yeah they don't they don't kill cows either they just kill uh humans good yeah sounds like a regular PETA member all right sounds cool (laughs) honestly though yeah so as far as the age of the animals go that are found mutilated and, and let's say cows in particular because honestly they are like we said they're the most commonly found they are generally four to five years old and given that age that age range, and given the lifespan of a cow, which is around twenty years old, they are fairly immature when they're killed and mutilated. And that's a, that's a common occurrence: is these young, these young domesticated animals being killed and mutilated. It's almost like they wanted the uh, no. Well, no, I was going to say they were going for that. Uh, that's is it called? Um, what's it called? Young cow meat? Is that, it's not venison, is it? No, venison is deer meat. Uh, calf is a um, oh, but like you're talking uh, uh, veal, 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 yeah. veal, veal, veal. Okay, so, but the parts that go missing isn't necessarily veal. So they, it's, I don't know. They just want that tender young Netflix cow, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think it's so fucked up. So a fair amount of these mutilated animals have been sent to laboratories in order to find out what's going on. And here are some common findings from these lab results. First, 
these animals usually have either an abnormally high or low amount of certain vitamins and minerals in their bodies, most commonly including copper, zinc, phosphorus, and potassium. So either they're getting mutilated or this is what happens when you don't take your Flintstone vitamins in the morning. Always take your Flintstone vitamins, but remember, don't take more than five because you'll overdose. Oh, yeah. And then that's probably what happened to the cows. Maybe they overdosed it. Yeah. Oh, no, they had I a mean, lack of vitamins. They had a lack of vitamins. That can't be true. Well, they either have, yeah, that's true. They're, it's either high or low, but there's never, but from the things that they saw, there's never a mi- medium. There's never a middle ground with those vitamins. Uh, it's very weird. So they, so they either OD'd on Flintstones or they underdeed on Flintstones, and it'll happen to you too. It'll happen to you. Take your Flintstones vitamins. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the other night I had a seltzer and um, it literally tasted like Flintstone vitamins. And um, I think it was called like Endless Summer. So uh, don't buy it because everybody's jumping on the seltzer train now. But um, you know what the worst part about it is you'd think, you know, if it tastes like Flintstone vitamins, you know, maybe it might be good for you. And it actually was, uh, as my brother pointed out, quite the contrary of a Flintstone vitamin. It was 0% vitamins and it was kind of alcoholic, but um, not really worth it. Yeah, it's an alcoholic drink task. Would you go in expecting to get like a like a immunity boost out of drinking that? <laughs> I should go to uh, 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 Jamba Juice and get a, a shot of immunity boost and just pour it in like uh, any sort of alcoholic drink to make myself feel a little bit better. But no, seltzers, are, they taste pretty good. Like they don't taste amazing, but also I like LaCroix and I could drink that shit. So it's like, you know, seltzer tastes good to me. But like this one was just, it was nuts. It was the thing that probably... I feel if anybody mutilated these cows, that was probably the drink that put them over the edge that made them decide, you know what? I'm going to go kill a cow today. You have a very dark past, don't you? (laughs) It's, you know, it's ups and downs. (laughs) Oh, I just snorted on recording. Okay. um, (laughs) So scientists trying to explain this vitamin and mineral abnormality in the body were actually unable to do so. They have no idea why it's either sky high or why it's rock bottom. Um, and now, although we said that their bodies are usually bloodless, just keep in mind that that's not always the case, but the bodies that have been studied that do have some remaining blood often have light pink colored blood and their wounds do not clot even several days after death. That's really weird. It's very strange, very strange indeed. And this was initially believed to be due to a high amount of radiation in their bodies, But upon further inspection, there were actually anticoagulants found in the system of these dead animals. Hmm. Which is almost stranger than the radiation explanation. Yeah, so anticoagulants, that's not necessarily something that naturally occurs, huh? No, because our body and our immune system is programmed to coagulate. It's programmed to clot uh, wounds and cuts and stuff like that. So anticoagulants are like blood thinners, stuff like that, that make it a lot harder for your body to repair a a cut, essentially. So the whole thing of them not bleeding and there being no blood seems a little engineered and intentional. Intentional. That's what I'm getting at. That is, let's just say the anticoagulants definitely shouldn't be there. Mm, Interesting. And lastly... Some of the internal organs, such as the heart and liver, have been found to be white in color and melted with the consistency of something like peanut butter. Ew. Yeah, yeah. Even I'm hungry, and that even doesn't sound very good to me. It's hard to describe anything as consistency of peanut butter without it kind of like making a grimace a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, especially when you're talking about some internal organs. Right. Which is already kind of gross as is, depending on where don't, you come from. Don't knock it till you try it, man. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals in, in liver and kidneys. So, no, I'm talking about like when organs are still like you know active. Like that that shit's kind of gross. Mm. Mm. <laughs> God, uh, you know, I'm just so hard. I don't understand why this is <laughs> happening to me. <laughs> yeah, it's like the more we talk about the blood and gore, it's just like I keep seeing like your pants tightening up it's like it's really it's really strange i'm glad we have this all on webcam yeah great yeah now it's all recorded too so they can always get me in court with this whatever fuck them (laughs) (laughs) 
So another another picture in my head of like Nick in court. He's like all like, you know, suited up, all cleaned up. And then they just suddenly bring down the projector. And it's just a shot of Nick on his fucking bed. Just with this fucking pitch in a fat tent. <laughs> yeah, that would look real good for my uh, my uh, acting reel, huh? Yep. <laughs> Your honor, I plead the fifth. <laughs> uh, right. So um, now that we have a firm grasp on what cattle mutilation entails, let's move on to some stories of actual mutilation and kind of see how it happens in the real world. The real proof is in the pudding. It is in the pudding, sir. And we, I know that you're fighting it. You're fighting, not you're fighting, arguing with me right now. I can see it in your face, but you have to wait. You have to. Yeah. Well, it's a good start that we're getting into the real stories. So this is, this is the stuff that actually happened. These are reported cases. Um, like I established before, there's a lot more information on this than I expected. Like I said, I thought this was some like niche, like um, what do they call those things? It's not a smut film. It's a uh, um, it's like those like porno films where they actually kill people in them. Snuff oh, film. Snuff. Yeah, dude, man, I gotta come over to my house sometime. You know, <laughs> never again. Especially now that I know you're in the middle of goddamn nowhere. <laughs> Okay, so the <laughs> the earliest known incident of unusual animal mutilation comes all the way from the beginning of 1606 in England, when almost 100 sheep were found dead in one fell swoop. Now, yeah, that's kind of weird, right? 100 sheep, but the weirdest part is as far as the, there was mutilation, and as far as that goes... They had body parts missing, including internal organs, and their fat was also essentially sucked from the body. So this time it wasn't the blood. It was actually all their their tallow or fat was taken from their body. And this is 1606. This is before America was even founded. Like, uh, I don't know if the... Uh, the colonies had been even formed yet at this point. So we're still in kind of like a... Is it the age of exploration? So shit's pretty... Uh, pretty bare bones back then pretty mysterious pretty bare bare bones i mean you could chalk it up to possibly i don't know what what did what did england have to worry about in the 1600s uh vikings so you could chalk it up to vikings coming in and killing 100 of their sheep and stealing their fat for fuel and stuff but honestly 100 of them that's a little i guess and i guess it's not impossible for like you know anticoagulants and which probably had a much more fun and whimsical name back then of blood stoppy stoppies or something like that but um i it's not too impossible they might have something that could like give the the effect of what's happening to them in present day but i don't know i have a hard time believing most accounts in the 1600s i believe it full-heartedly because i believe in our ancestors (laughs) yeah 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 the same folk who thought Frankenstein's monster was the scariest thing probably ever to exist, which actually, that was probably, when did that come out? Mary Shelley. Yeah, do you know it was made by a, written by a woman? Yeah, I did know it was written by a woman, Tasker. I had to read it in high school. <laughs> I actually really like the book. Um, Mary Shelley, uh, she was 1800, so yeah, Frankenstein's monster hasn't, haven't, hasn't even been written yet. Yep. And yet you don't put any faith in your ancestors when they tell you 100 sheep have gone missing. And you know what the problem is, Tasker? I kind of understand where you're coming from because you're trying to defend, you're de- you're defending the people against the sheep. But I understand why, because you're Irish, right? So if you're Irish, naturally, you're just defending your lover. You're, you're trying to, you're trying to <laughs> make sure that people know that, yeah, I take up sheep and I fuck them. You got a problem with that? <laughs> Wow, you're just gonna take that angle without even without even blinking. Nick looked at me with a straight, hard glance that entire time. Sheep are adorable. Um, that do yeah, I, but that doesn't mean you can just have your way with them, no. you sick fuck. <laughs> I grew up in California. How does that relate to me at all? It's in your genes. It's in your blood, dude. I've seen you. I've seen you <laughs> hang out with the sheep before. <laughs> Did you? Like, yeah. Hey. What? Yeah, dude, you put your arm around it all slow, like like you're at the movies. You're like, hey, so uh, 
What do you want to do after this? <laughs> we like meet up. We're like, okay, bro. I know I didn't say anything, but like, I'm bringing this girl along. Like, would that be like really cool? And you're like, oh yeah, man. I'm like, all right, you, you sure, bro? Because like, yeah, I'm just like, you know, I'm really like, yeah, you know, you know. You're like, yeah, just <laughs> pulling fucking like Bo Peep and shit. Mm, yeah, man. And you just, God, you're just like a shepherd. I call you the shepherd for a reason. <laughs> 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 That's disgusting, but am I just covering myself up? Who knows? But I do feel bad for the sheep. Okay, good. Well, at least you feel bad, but you're you're looking at it all wrong. So <laughs> let's move on from let's move on from 1606, though. So from that point, that event, more mutilations have popped up here and there, but nothing really grabbed the attention of the general public because honestly, this phenomenon. Um, was only an issue that was plaguing the livestock farming community. And they usually would just talk about it amongst themselves because you in between 1600 and, and let's say 1960 media wasn't a huge thing, right? Right. No farmer is going to go to media and be like, Hey, so yeah, I was hanging out with my sheep. You know, I was just pulling out of it after I finished. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, gosh. Gross. And then, you know, all of a sudden I walked out and I looked at, I looked over for my cow because I'm like, yeah, that cow's next. But I looked over there. She was missing her whole anus. You know, <laughs> no, no person in the media would ever believe them during that time. So it was really just an issue that they would talk about between different farmers. But that all changed in 1967. I was going to say, you know that they're telling the truth because they had that post nut clarity. Yeah, they were like, yeah, I just finished up, and I was like, my God, my cow was missing all kinds of stuff. I was going to yank on that udder until you would not believe, but it was missing. I couldn't even grab on nothing. <laughs> A good glimpse into our ancestors you have so much faith in. <laughs> so on September 9th, 1967, never forget, Snippy the horse was found dead by her owner, Agnes King and Agnes's son, Harry. First off, about the story tasker, um, I just want you to know I disagree with the female name Agnes. I think it's disgusting. It's repulsive. <laughs> it's, That's the name um, of a horse, not a person, okay? I, um, If I met somebody at my school named Agnes, I would feel a little bad. If you are out there and you are named Agnes, um, in, nicknames are chill. But hey, if you if you if you can work it and you're making it happen, good for you. That that says a lot about your personality. Also, if there's any Agnes's out there, it's really not that expensive to change your name. Go to your city hall. You get you pay like eighteen dollars a letter or some shit like that, and you can be named Jessica, like a normal name. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Okay. <laughs> uh, by normal, you mean American name? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you get? What are you gonna name them? What would you what would you name if your name was Agnes, what would you change your name to to make it sound more cultural? Uh let's see. I don't know because I'm American. So I would just Exactly. Exactly. So don't you give me shit saying I'm racist when that's all I know. All I know is, is white white girl name. All I know are names that are on Starbucks coffee cups when they're given to the customers. That's all I know. So we have like Jessica spelled with a K, right? We have Chloe spelled with a K. We have um, um, Eric spelled with a K, which, by the way, thanks for listening, buddy. We have. Uh, thank you. You're, no, I was talking to Eric. And I was, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, we have um, um, Marcus spelled with a K, right? We have um, Alex spelled with a KS. We, you know, uh. there's an issue. There, there is a there is a plague in our country of people spelling regular names a fancy way so they stand out. Anyway, yeah. we're getting more off topic about names. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did know a Kaylee, which was spelled K A L E I G H. Yeah. That sounds more like a medical condition. See, that's the problem. <laughs> oh, man. So, to all the Agnes's out there, um, well, if, Nick, if you could change your name, what would you change it to? Agnes. But that's because <laughs> it sounds cool with me. I'm a, a big man. I'm a man. My name's Agnes. You know, I sound like a Viking. When a woman is when a woman's name is Agnes, I feel like if I piss her off by looking at her wrong, she's gonna chase me around the kitchen with like a rolling pin or something. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, the name does not have a very good connotation. No, okay, let's bring let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to the story. I'm sorry I brought this up. <laughs> back to Snippy. So now remember, Snippy is this horse which they found dead. So poor old Sniffy actually wasn't that old. 
Um, she was a young three-year-old horse, and she was found with her head and neck completely skinned, and all the flesh was missing from the bones as well. So it was like from the neck, from the base of the neck up, was just bone. So okay. it kind of looks like your uh, your plate after uh, you've uh, had your wings stop. Yes, it, it just like that. Actually, probably weighed the same too. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. If, if if you ever have the pleasure of seeing Nick eat wings, which is I would venture to say is probably one of your favorite foods, right? It, it is my favorite. Definitely my favorite food. Oh, yeah. It's um, it's a beautiful sight to behold and kind of disgusting, but in like a semi erotic way, you know, mm. it's it's a it's a it's a it's a mystical time. <laughs> One could say it's a uh, um, uh, what's it called? Not pious. That's sort of like like oh, like a religious. It's a oh, I'm right there. It's um sacred sacred a sacred experience so mm -hmm. any of those fans out there if you know if we ever get um i'm not saying come over to my house or whatever but if we ever get closer and we're at like a meetup or something and well, let's go get wings i'm an easy and, guy let's go get wings and don't go home with nick you'll end up in a smut film yeah i have a basement now okay um bad <laughs> bad bad <laughs> there were also surgically cut precise little incisions throughout the body and of course there wasn't a drop of blood to be found in the horse or around the horse so of course agnes the great called the sheriff <laughs> and explained the situation and the scene but they weren't very helpful of course the sheriff essentially told her it was probably just okay and he said this he said it was probably just a lightning strike and told her to basically fuck off <laughs> did he a actually say strike. <laughs> Do you actually say like, God damn it, like Agnes, it's a lightning strike. Fuck off. Yeah, dude. He, no, he didn't actually say fuck off, but he essentially, that was essentially what he was trying to say to her by saying that her concerns were due to a lightning strike. Okay. Uh, tell her that he's got better things to do. Yes. Now, the story got a little bit of traction in the media. And because of that, a couple teenagers confessed to doing this to Snippy by shooting her which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, right? Of course, the mm -hmm. details don't match up. And they probably didn't kill and mutilate Snippy, but the fact that these teens confessed to it brought more attention to the story and thus more attention to cattle mutilation, the, the, the entire cattle mutilation phenomena to the general public. And it kind of took off from here. So this is a very important story in the cattle mutilation world. It's always those fucking clout chasers that are always making this shit popular so that I now in 2020 have to talk about it. Yes. Sucks for you, right? That some Logan Paul lookalike in 1967 <laughs> had, to, had to confess to it. Now you have to sit here and listen to me talk about cutting up a cow for an hour and you're not even getting paid for it. Nope, it's not like you're, not a, you're a butcher's apprentice or something. You're not like at a butcher <laughs> shop. No, it's just me yelling at you about this shit. And I think that's a very interesting point you bring up of like everybody being like, oh, he's fucking Logan Paul, YouTuber, blah, blah, blah. They're so annoying. I hate this new era. But as you can see, this shit's nothing's changed. This is this is the same shit. Just now it's on camera. Yeah. Now it's easier to do. Mm hmm. That's the only difference. And from the snippy case, more and more farmers and livestock owners came out about their animals being killed in mysterious ways. So they thought that there was some kind of camaraderie. So now they were feeling a little more comfortable going to the media and saying, look, buddy, I was hanging out with my cows. I was sitting on top of her. I plopped down behind her. I unzipped my pants. And wouldn't you know it, she fell on the ground and she did not have an anus no more. Now you tell me, buddy, is that weird or is that not weird? All right. They had more <laughs> confidence to do that. <laughs> oh yeah because now media is becoming a thing because back then remember this was uh this was small town humanity when like you lived in a town of like 50 people and everybody knew everything about everyone at all times but now it's like you know we could get wider attention and uh like you said there is that sort of like once you hear other people have been talking about the same shit happening and how disappointed they were to before their uh late night barnyard coitus that the anus is now missing yeah <laughs> Let me go ahead and see. Look at that cow laying there like that with that fat ass sticking out. You, you, get away with you could tell he wants it. Come on, buddy. Let me hold on to your horns and I'll just ride you for a couple minutes. You know what I mean, buddy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so to all the farmers who've been listening to us, uh, it's been fun. 
have a good life. Uh, we enjoyed your patronship while you was still here. You guys are sick. All right. So if any of you <laughs> out there are dropping your overalls to go hang out with a cow, you <laughs> fuck off. Oh, dude, I've never been a fan of overalls. I used to wear them when I was like one for those uh, Sears <laughs> photos. So it, I don't know. It's cute. It's cute when you're like an infant, but like anything, I don't know. I just think it's a, it's a weird look. It makes me think of the nineties and that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. The nineties was a really crappy decade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was, it's always fun though, to look at like uh, what my parents used to wear in that time. Cause I, I was a, I was a little baby during then, but like seeing like those weird plaid sweaters and like, it's, it was something. It was gross. So, in 1975, okay, U.S. Senator of Colorado Floyd K. Haskell reached out to the FBI for assistance with the livestock mutilation issue. He said that there were 130 mutilations in Colorado alone, and up to nine other states were reporting similar high numbers of unusual livestock deaths. So, after a lot of pressure, the FBI did an investigation, and after said investigation... In 1979, the FBI stated that there were reported 8,000 mutilations in Colorado just by itself. Just an investigation in Colorado. 8,000. See, this is the part of the story where it really started to get my attention. And it seemed more, it seemed less mumbo jumbo because the FBI actually started to investigate this. And actually, and those numbers were huge. Like that's, this is actually a, 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 real problem like on a countrywide basis and an implication to think about is the fact that it's causing these farmers money so the reported 8,000 mutilations in Colorado estimated to be a loss of about a million dollars in livestock Ooh, so it's affecting the economy that's why the FBI got involved because money yep they they would not care otherwise trust me oof yeah so true it's like they say um if you had to choose between um, covering yourself in chum and jumping into the ocean or uh, trying to avoid reporting income, the IRS would be more dangerous. Did you say cover yourself in cum? Chum. Mm, okay, gotcha, gotcha. That makes more sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unless that, that was some just like deep-rooted fetish that just kind of came to, came to light. I don't want to talk about it anymore, all right? I feel sticky. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay first let me, let me hold off right here this is a very sexually charged episode for some reason i don't know what's <laughs> happening <laughs> you're, you're actually right this, this really shouldn't be this way okay look if everybody out there i will stop <laughs> i will stop because <laughs> this is a very inappropriate episode to be this um worked up so we will, we will stop what does it say about us where it's like I think I almost feel like this is up up with the uh, the succubus episode, which is literally about sex demons. And this episode might actually be more sexually charged. And it's about dead cows. I don't know, man. Maybe my former self. I maybe I was like a farmer. I don't know, dude. <laughs> uh, this will either make or break us. I don't know. Well, here's the thing. I know why you're. I know why you're having these feelings. I mean, you're Irish. That makes more who's sense. Saying, but me, I don't know. Who's saying I'm the one with the feelings here? It sounds like you're the one who's getting all hot and bothered. I don't know, dude. I have to blame it. I have to project it on somebody. So I'm. You're the closest person. <laughs> well, I am glad though that at the end of the day, regardless of what we agree or disagree on, we did invent a new fetish of deep sea fishing covered in cum. Yeah, that's how you get the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. So, okay, moving on from this topic, there are <laughs> um, now we're talking about all these mutilations, eight thousand in Colorado, but this is going on in several states and several parts of the world. So, throughout the years, more cases popped up, and then we get to May of two thousand one in a place called Yag Yagya Yagyakarta Yagyakarta. Indonesia. Why? I feel like there's a couple vowels missing. We'll get there later. All right. So Yogyakarta, Yagi, Indonesia. Um, so we have 200 goats, which were found dead and mutilated in the usual fashion, of course. But that's 200 goats found at one time. It's not that's not over a period of time. That's not like 200 goats over like a year. That's like they woke up, 
I don't know what Indonesian people sound like. I'm not even going to attempt it. They woke up and they're like, holy crap, 200 of my goats are dead and mutilated. Now think about this of, uh, cause I'm a big fan of, uh, that whole thing of like the bigger, the number, the more it becomes just a statistic. So yes. think about how many, like, you, you know, we all have like coin jars, right? You know, where you, you put your loose change in. Yeah. And how many pennies it takes just to reach a dollar. Now take 200 pennies and then put them out on your table. And each one of those is a singular live goat. Like 200 doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a, that's a fucking shit ton of them. That's a lot of goats to die in one fell swoop. That's a lot. And not just in die, but day. they were all, and they were all mutilated. They, so, so whatever happened took, took the time to mutilate them as well. Yeah, dude. Like I, I would say even doing like a good 10 of them in a day would be, that's like a full day's work right there. Yeah. Tell me about it, dude. I just got finished doing that to some cows up the road and I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm glad you're, uh, you're, um, adding to your culture of your new living space. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to do it for the research. I had to be, I had to understand what is happening to these cows by doing it myself. And let me tell you, it ain't easy because they'll yeah. fight you every step of the way, dude. Every step. Well, that's why the, uh, the, the paralyzing agent comes in. But even then, like, I mean, I've never had to like clean a fish or like a chicken or anything like that, but that's a, it's an ordeal. It is a whole thing. I've done it before. It ain't fun. It is not fun. Um, so in modern times, the phenomena just kept growing. Honestly, from like from these different milestones that we're talking about, these different stories, it just keeps growing. There's no, it doesn't slow down, right? It doesn't just die out. You know how like crop circles, which we will ha we'll do an episode on eventually, but you know how crop circles, they had like their time to shine. People were always talking about them, but you don't hear about them a lot these days, even though they're probably still happening. Right. These, these livestock mutilations just kept going it just snowballed it just keeps going and keeps getting bigger so for instance in 2002 just in that one year there have been an estimated 3500 cases of livestock mutilation in south america although only 400 of them were actually officially if officially reported to local authorities um so this brings up another issue right the issue is that only about one in 10 cattle mutilations are properly reported or reported at all. So the actual numbers of these mutilations are most likely much higher than the documented ones. Ah, the American justice system. Yeah, because like I said, like I know I was joking about it earlier about, you know, having sex with a cow and then telling the media about it. But honestly, the jokes aside, who in their right mind is going to be like, you know what? My cows keep dying in these really weird ways and all their stuff is missing. I wonder who I can talk to about this who will believe me, you know? Oh, yeah. In a situation like that, it sometimes it is just easier, not necessarily the better option, but easier option. It just have to be like, fuck it. Like, he got killed. Like, shit happens. Cows die. This is really weird and probably creeping me out. So I'm just, you know what? I'm just going to walk away. That's that honestly, dude, that's a lot of the attitude that these farmers have towards these mutilations is they have the fuck it attitude. They don't they're like, you know what? You're like, you're right. I have a bunch of cattle. Um, nobody's going to believe me. So I'm just going to bury it or do whatever, make steak. I don't give a shit. Whatever they do with it, you know? Well, um, yeah. And it's a problem. And you'll find the more like because a, a farmer has a full day every day. They're working a full work day no matter what. And if you've ever had a full-time job before, you'll find that like um, it's a lot easier to say fuck it to a lot more things because you're already busy. You're already, you know, you're earning your bread and shit. So like I kind of don't, when you got a farmer who's literally day-to-day -day existence is work, you see some spooky shit. You're like, I don't even want it. I got a whole day of chores ahead of me tomorrow. I'm tired. I'm running out of whiskey. I just, no. Nope, don't want to. Don't want to go to the sheriff. Don't want to go to the media. You're just gonna bury it and move on, pretty much. Yep. Um, but just know that the numbers you guys see online about how many mutilations we have out there is probably drastically higher because of this. So, but the the incidents, honestly, they just keep coming. So even even to last year. So back in the summer of 2019, a ranch in Oregon called Sylvie's Valley Ranch had a run in with this phenomena that cost them five young bulls and that also costed them around $12,000. Ouch. 
Yes. Very. And that's another thing that we were talking about is it's not just the weirdness of it all, but it's also a huge financial hit for all these farmers. Something's going on and it's taking money out of their pockets. Yeah. So it's not just weird, but like, like you said, each of these things is like a couple hundred dollars just gone. And on not only that, but you know, with the milk they produce and all that stuff, like it's not just a, Oh, sad. My animal died, but it's also, dude, there goes my fucking paycheck. There goes my production. Yeah, exactly. Each of these bulls these in this story cost six thousand dollars. It's crazy. Oof. I didn't do Wait. the math right. No, um, that's that's not correct. Okay, hold on. Um, okay, so I take twelve thousand dollars and I oh. divide it by six thousand. Um I yeah, I did the math wrong on this. Uh it was five bulls. Okay. Six oh, okay. So I just multiplied it wrong. It's a it, it was six thousand dollars each. So it was thirty thousand dollars altogether that they lost. Oh, that's a, interesting. Okay, uh, that that's a fuck ton of money. That's a whole like um, that's more than you make in a year on minimum wage. Yeah, that's bad. So that's even worse. Um, my bad. I as you can as you all know, I I definitely blew my way through math. If you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> Listening to your your mathematical thought process was very much entertaining. By the way, <laughs> thank you. Um, um. So the bulls were found, quote unquote, deflated. And by looking at the picture, if you guys look up the Sylvie's Ranch, the Sylvie's Valley Ranch um, cattle mutilations, they they for sure look like um, like, you know, those tasker, you know, those vacuums that you can get in those bags and you can put like blankets and shit and pillows in these bags and vacuum all the air out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He put, it has, like, the vacuum suction so you can make really big, like, pillows and blankets into, like, small little, little like, sheets. Exactly. It honestly looks like that. It looks like all, all everything inside of it was just sucked out. It looks really, really unsettling. Um, so, but, so these cow, these bulls were missing. So not only were they deflated, but they were missing skin on their heads, their tongues, and genitals, which were all surgically removed, by the way. But the interesting thing about the rest of the animal was that it was, honestly, it didn't look like it had been attacked by anything. It didn't look like it was otherwise, you know what I mean? Otherwise. I'm looking at the picture now and like, dude, no joke. It actually does look like, you know, those like bounce houses like we had when we were kids, the big Mm -hmm. inflatable ones. It looks like if as if a giant inflatable cow bounce house was just like deflated. It's, It's really weird. It's all crinkled up. It's very strange, but the rest of the body looks fine. The, the the fur is nice. There's no cuts. There's no, it's a very strange scene. So I recommend listeners look up the Sylvie's Valley Ranch cattle mutilation so you can kind of see what we're talking about. But there were also no scavenger animals to be seen around the, the, the carcass, which is highly unusual, right? I mean, if you know anything about the ecosystem and if you know anything about the hierarchy of animals, this is weird that there were no scavenger animals and there weren't insects or anything like that or maggots. So there wasn't even a drop of blood around or inside the animals. It's a very strange scene. The FBI was contacted by the ranch vice president for help with the investigation and they gave no comment on the situation. So unfortunately, we don't know what the FBI found from their investigation. Classic. But again, in late 2019, and again in Oregon, another cow was found mutilated on the family ranch of Stephen Roth. Now, the cow was found dead, no blood to be found again, and the udder, tongue, heart, and genitals were all missing, of course, surgically cut off, right? Right. So after all this stuff, Roth, during an interview, said that he is afraid to go out and tend the cattle without a gun now. Like there is something going on that is freaking these people out. Like these are some, these are some tough, real Americans, right? Some Republicans. I bleed the colors of the flag and yeah, (laughs) but guess what, buddy? I ain't going out there without a gun because there's some little green men taking my cow's butts. Okay. Now that we, we, we brought up little green men. Our last episode was the, uh, the Kelly Hopkinsville thing, right? No, we did mermaids last time. Tasker. We did. We did. Are you still drunk? (laughs) I'd like to be, uh, but so I got to bring up, I, I did do some research onto that a little bit more. We were talking about little green men and they were saying that actually the, uh, the, the goblins that attacked them, the aliens, you say the little green men were probably just horned owls. They fit the description. They're about the same height. They would be erratic and jump around and they would probably, um, you know, if there was no blood, I mean, it's probably cause they didn't hit them. 
So you're telling me that you think owls fit the description of uh, alien, bulletproof aliens? They, uh, there was a couple paragraphs about it, man. It wasn't like an afterthought. It's just, uh, you know, adrenaline's a hell of a drug, dude. And uh, have you ever seen a bird freaking out before? That shit's terrifying. Yeah, but I know what a bird looks like. That's the difference between me and you, Tasker. I know what a bird looks like when it freaks out, but I don't know what an alien looks like when it freaks out. So if if a bird was freaking out outside my window and I was shooting at it, I'm like, yo, that owl is trying to get into my house. Mm-hmm. You know what I, I mean? Don't know. Maybe the owls were vaguely mutilated and maybe it was like a thug gang of them or something that looked a little off and weird. That's not entirely off the table. Okay, look, we... We are not bringing up the Kelly Hopkinsville, which, by the way, I'm ashamed of you listeners. I put my heart and soul into that episode, and it is <laughs> lagging behind. <laughs> the uh, a good uh, Mitch Hedberg quote that might you might res- that might resonate with you is that uh, I remember he said like a joke. He didn't really get a big audience reaction. He's like, "Come on, guys, that joke was way better than you acted." Yep, and he's a hack, but he gets it. Okay, he's so not a hack, but okay. Let's move on from this, all right? We're, I'm not bringing, I'm not getting into an argument about owls with you, Tasker. <laughs> Owl. I'm mm. just saying, I had to let it be known on live podcast that I I put my foot down and said, no, that 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 last one was bullshit. Okay, well, I'm glad that you think that aliens can be um, that can they can be mistaken for owls. I'm really happy <laughs> that that's how your your mind works, and that's how other people's mind works too. That's cool. No, it's, everybody's got to have those elementary defense mechanisms for themselves. So they're not scared out of their mind. It's fine. <laughs> or maybe it's because we're looking at it through a calmer standpoint, and we're not some trigger happy, you know, probably a couple cocktails in uh, country folk. Fair enough, but hey, you're just being racist at this point, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I think stereotypical and judgmental but not necessarily racist hey man you call them you call them crackers and that is not nice you can't (laughs) say that yes you did (laughs) oh fine we will agree to disagree all right so look now that we've learned how prevalent these cases are and how they're how many are actually happening around us more and more so um I want to get into the possible causes of these deaths and mutilations. Although, like I said at the top of the episode, we all know what's really going on here. (laughs) Okay. First, let's talk about the government. Naturally, we got to get this bullshit out of the way, but it's, it's something still we need to talk about. Okay. In 1979, after a lot of mutilations had been coming to light in the public eye, the feds were pressured into conducting an official investigation on the matter, right? Mm. And how do you think this went, Tasker? How do you think the government uh, concluded this? Um, botched and um, something very unsatisfying. Exactly. Just like my sexual performances. So... <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, whether it was true or not, the government concluded their investigation and it was inconclusive. Oh, now, big fucking shock. It's right. Exactly. So although the government admitted some of these some of these cases were mysterious in nature, they also stated a majority of the cases were results of, quote, uh, um, natural predation, unquote, which is we both know from hearing what we heard um, with the description of these mutilations is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Yeah, see, that's just lazy. Like, that's just a just grabbing a a Google image and just tacking it on and calling it graphic design. It's just, it doesn't, it's it's lazy. It's just, that's something I could just come up with right now. And I didn't have to spend a cent or a minute of my time. It's lazy because they know that there's no... For a lot of these cases, there's no proof that they were just attacked by another by an animal, by a predator, a wolf, right? Anything like that. There's no, there are clear signs of animal attacks, right? There are clear, there's gashes, there's ways to tell it was ripped apart with claws or teeth. None of that was here, but yet they say it's natural, natural predation. That's just the laziest excuse I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> And it's like, okay, if they gave like a more specific like, oh, well, there's a type of predator who does blank blank, which might have to do with the paralysis or maybe it's a type of venom or maybe there's a. okay. well, then I would listen to them maybe a little bit more. But they're just like, no, natural predation, natural cause. It's like, dude, what the fuck are we supposed to get from that? We get nowhere. We get nothing from it. 
yeah, we just get more crackpot theories because they're leaving it wide open. Now, up next, of course, we have the nerds, right? There's a bunch of nerds all over the world <laughs> saying that these deaths and mutilations are due to natural causes. Tasker, are you in this group? Uh, well, let's see how specific it gets. Okay, so first, missing body parts such as the lips, anus, and genitals have been explained away by either dehydration of said body parts or burrowing parasites and scavengers. How long were these things dead, by the way? Was it just like they were alive yesterday and then today they were just dead with all this shit happened to them? Most of the time, because if you think about it, farmers have to be checking on their cattle. Cow they have cowboys who herd and stuff like that every day. So they usually will find them the next day. That's usually how it goes. Okay, then it's probably not. Um, I mean, because where, where where is this taking place? Like the Midwest, right? All over the place. Okay. Um, okay, if we were more towards like, like south closer to Texas... Maybe the dehydration would make a little bit more sense because if it's like 100 degrees outside and you're dead, obviously that stuff's going to really accelerate like crazy. Um, you know what? I'm probably going to be on a list, but uh, let me look something well, up. Um, well, first off, first off, my problem with the dehydration theory is the fact that it doesn't account for the body parts completely missing and just being cut off. Like it, the dehydration doesn't do that. It shrivels up and maybe it gets it's smaller. But not, But even within a day, I don't think that's possible. Yeah, and unfortunately, you have a point there where um, it's one thing because it's like if it shrivels up into something, there wouldn't be, it, like you said, it was like a surgical cut. That doesn't happen with dehydration. Like, it would still be like, you know, things might have been pulled apart, but it would look more, um, it wouldn't look as engineered. It would look more like, you know, like, I don't know, you're, it just, it doesn't sit right with me. Like, dehydration, like, I could see to a degree certain things, but being completely completely eradicated and also these are internal organs too it's not like they were exposed to direct sunlight or anything like that like they might be cooked up at worst and be really gross looking but if we're talking if we're under the assumption that it was only a day maybe even two like well no because two days that should be how long does it take for a body to decompose well, do in my experience, it takes uh, it takes <laughs> multiple months, uh, depending on which uh, depending on which stage you're at. You know, first you have rigor mortis, um, that happens usually within what five hours or so. Um, no, uh, a little less than that. I just okay. So to reason to add that reasoning in with cows, I just typed in how long does it take for a cow to decompose? Um, a mature dairy cow will take approximately six to eight months to fully decompose. Mm -hmm. So even if it was halfway decomposed three months in, you know, that shit might be like liquid, but like it would still be present. I mean, it doesn't matter how I mean, unless you're like, I don't know. And especially because this was like a while ago and it's also the Midwest and it's just, I don't know. Well, it's everywhere. One of those few well, here's the thing. It's not just the Midwest. It's happening all over the world. It's, there's no, there's nothing left behind. So even a, even a decomposed or a dehydrated body part would, would leave something behind, right? It would be, it wouldn't be itself, but it would, it would, there would be something. They are completely missing, cut off, specifically cut right. off. And the rest of the body is not decomposed. That is, that is, so that is a, a, a cop out for me that when they say these body parts have been decomposed basically, or they're being dehydrated. Yeah, see, I could see, like, maybe, like, a small animal taking an eyeball or something, or a bird taking an eyeball. That That's reasonable, but, like, the big organ, and like you said, there's no, like, it's just complete, unless they really had a feast on them, but, like, so I'm going to say this is, uh, my, my assessment is sketchy at best. Sketchy at best. Okay, let's move on. Missing and mutilated eyes and internal organs have been explained by insects like blowflies or scavengers like vultures. Ah, see, just like I mentioned, this is, to me, this is the most plausible because it's one of those things where um, it could just be a ton of them had a big old feast and there would be not nothing left over. It's plausible, but I will say the issue with me, especially when it comes to the eyes, and I think they're, they're, they're using the scavengers for things like the eyes because it makes sense on paper, but it doesn't also explain the cuts around the eye sockets that I've seen in pictures that it, it just looks like it has been cut. You know what I mean? It's not like, okay, there's a difference between a beak pecking out an eyeball and then a, an eyeball being cut out of its socket. 
there's a huge difference in what it leaves behind. I don't know, man. Birds are pretty smart. They might have been able to, you know, fashion their beaks and uh, peck into it in a, a surgical manner at this point. Do birds are stupid? I know. Do you know yeah. how many videos I've seen of birds flying into glass windows and dying? Dude, well, yeah, not all birds are smart, but they are like almost second place to like, like they're up there with like monkeys and intelligence. A bird was actually the first non-human animal to ask an existential question. No, first off, that sounds like fake news, as my it's buddy true. Trump put it. Oh, my God. Yeah. And second, no, even monkeys are dumb. Monkeys are dumb. Birds are stupid. Humans are superior. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, we're definitely smarter than them by a long shot. Yes. But you can't discount that birds are pretty clever. They can be they are proven to be some of the smartest animals on the planet. I, I I need I need the car facts. I need the proof on that one, man, because I can't see a bird sitting there, like especially a scavenger bird, by the way. I can't see a, a bird sitting there looking at a dead cow being like, OK, so how do I make it look like an alien did this so that the humans don't hunt me down for for eating their cattle's eyes? Oh, well, I'll just I'll make, I'll make I'll make surgical incisions with my beak. And maybe if I had maybe at a circumference of two inches, no, two and a quarter inches. Yeah, 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 I'll do that. And then I'll go ahead and just rip it out of its sock and they'll think a human cut it out with a scalpel. Well, maybe they just wanted to take it out so it's not part of the big, th you know, they get the, the specific organ and they cut it out with their beaks and pull it out so it's easier to eat. I don't know, man. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not a bird watcher. I don't know how birds interact with their eyeballs and stuff, <laughs> but all I'm saying is it's just, it's, it, they're not that smart. They can't be. We'll have to get into that more in the uh, possible future episode of uh, birds being invented by the government to spy on us. That is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> now, next up, we have the absence of blood. And this has been explained by the blood pooling up at the lowest point of the body. Um, when it's lying down and breaking down into its most basic components. And as far as the blood surrounding the body, it's explained by animals and insects eating it. Mm, I would need specifics because not all animals really like drinking blood. And if they do, the ones that do drink blood can't like, if we're talking about like leeches, Unless you put a whole barrel of them on there, where last I checked, they don't move in um, armies. I uh, that's a that's a little hard to explain. Yeah, it does. It doesn't hold a lot of water for me at all. Okay, look, all this natural cause stuff sounds great if you're like a disinformation shill. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not <laughs> yeah, I like I said, I think there's a couple that could be. I think the bird one is the most plausible, in my opinion. I'll give you it's plausible. I'm not saying that it's, it's happening, though. Fair enough? Yep, fair enough. That's as far as I'm going to go. Yep, I'm, I'm okay with this. Okay, so let's move on to the next supposed cause, and that's human intervention, okay? And we have two main categories of explanations when it comes to humans and their intent here. First, we have sociopaths, essentially, right? And these are the people we were kind of joking about this whole episode. These are the people who get some kind of sick pleasure or hmm, sexual satisfaction from mutilating animals, much like Tasker and his Irish ancestry. Hey, I'm not the one with the fat boner this entire episode that you keep parading on FaceTime. <laughs> Look at me. I'm ready to eat. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It's a good episode. They're learning a lot about us today. Great, great. Um, <laughs> now, that is a, honestly, like, there are weirdos out there. There are sick people who would probably do this, but the problem is, would it be, a, would, is it like a movement? Is it like a movement, right? Because it's happening all over the world. It's been happening for like 400 something years. Is it like people around the world are just like, you know what? My wife hasn't had sex with me in 20 years, but that cow down the street starting to look pretty good. Like, is there like millions of people thinking the same thing and doing this? Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. And there's no real need to murder the cow. Like, but then how do they get off? I guess if that's what they need, if they're that kind of, I guess we're talking, yeah, you're right, sociopaths, yes. But still, it's that sort of, you know, the cow's not going to say anything. Not to, that I encourage that behavior. It's just a sort of like, it just seems kind of mean to murder it afterwards. That's just like, that seems a little much. 
I think it's I think it's bold of you to uh, to infer that they murdered it after. So I don't know. <laughs> no, you may be right. You may be right. That might be their thing. And but that's also another thing on top of that is okay. Let's go into the assumption that that's exactly what they're going for. There is no way there is enough people with that level of sexual deviancy mm-hmm. to cause all of these. I think they. To a degree, I'm sure there are cases where this is definitely a thing that has happened, but just the sheer volume of it, like, makes me think, I would say, I would believe in this, but it is by no, no means the explanation for all these cases at all. Yeah, no, I agree. That's what I'm saying is it's not a movement. There's not a bunch of people on a Facebook group saying, hey, we like to kill and fuck cows, you in, and everybody's doing it. (laughs) i mean yeah you would be surprised the volume of people into weird shit but like actually acting on it and stuff like that and especially something like illegal like killing somebody's cows which is their property technically i just like i said i i wouldn't be surprised if this had something to do with it i think it's only a small portion of it like the bird thing like i think it's a very like i definitely think it's part of it and i think a lot of cases probably more bird cases than anything but there's, there's still a lot and it doesn't quite cover everything Exactly. And second, when it comes to human intervention, we it, this one's a little bit more well-known. It's a little bit more blamed, all right? And we have cults or devil worshipers. This theory mainly comes from the fact that there is no blood at the scene and some organs are missing. These things could have possibly been taken for ritual purpose. Another reason that cults are a main theory is because it originated smack dab in the middle of the satanic panic during the 70s and 80s. So these cattle mutilations were still happening. And what do you know? The sa- So was the satanic panic and the people just decided to put two and two together because what better, what lazier, better way is there to blame anything in the 70s and 80s than saying devil worshippers are doing it? Yeah, I mean, okay, I can say that it would be more plausible to believe that there would be a group of people pulling this shit off. But I do agree that I think it is dumb that everyone just blames everything on devil worshippers. I do think that's a bit like a bit too easy of a scapegoat. I do think cults and like groups with like ritual sacrifice and stuff like that, like I said, like with the previous one, probably had something to do with it. And I'm sure there was a couple cases, but like. I just keep thinking back of the case where like 200 went missing in a day. Like that's, that's a lot of legwork for just even like a, a group of like 20 people. Like that cows are pretty big. Yeah. No, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's it's ridiculous. Um, but I could, so, yeah, I could see this though, explaining the single cases though, of like, if there was like maybe like two or three cows that got like deflated, like, okay, that I could, I think we could probably blame on, May not be a cult or Satanist, but or um no, that's that's incorrect. Um Satan worshippers. Devil worshippers, Tasker. There's a difference between remember, this is my thing, man. This is the thing that gets me angry. Is when you say <laughs> Satanists, it okay, all right. No, it's cool. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> oh, good. It's always it's always it makes me happy to see you get riled up. Thank you. Okay. And speaking of getting <laughs> riled up, um, Let's move on to the next one. And now we are actually coming to my second favorite. I would say my second favorite theory. And we're going to be blaming the government for this one. Okay. Now, it's not as juicy as it sounds. It's not going to be that fun. But the main theory behind this is that the government has a covert operation going on where they are mutilating these animals and possessing certain body parts in order to study possible disease outbreaks that could be springing from these animals. I believe this more than all the other ones. Honestly, this makes the most sense. It makes sense in theory, but why would they just leave the animals behind? It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know. I mean, people are lazy. Even if it's the government, even the most highest official you can think of, we are only human. And um, well, like you said, maybe they just harvest the organs and that's it. And then they just make a run for it. And they would be the ones to have the uh, access to paralysis agents or things the anti-coagular blog 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 yes yes quite fair enough okay <laughs> um but an, uh, just as a little side note another reason for this theory is that people claim to see in those infamous black unmarked helicopters near the mutilation site either during or shortly after the discovery but it's very rare it's not i'm not saying every instance says that there's a helicopter but it has been it has been seen let's say true 
I think in America, this that's my explanation. I believe in uh, other parts of the world. Okay, we, we might be still in like sketchy territory, but definitely America would do some bullshit like this and then just like leave it there and just not say anything about it. You know, that's why it's my second favorite is I could see the government doing this. So yeah, it's up there for me. It's definitely up there as a theory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I would I would subscribe to that. I think it's a combination of I think there is a, a human interaction involved with, but I do I gotta say like a like I said I'm on that I'm on my owl train right now. I think birds are a lot more responsible for shit than we think. All right, man, you and your fucking owls, <laughs> you and your <laughs> owls, dude. Damn. <laughs> Which is ironic too because I can't stand birds as pets. I think they're. This, I, I find them annoying and I find them incredibly needy. And at least like with a dog, you can like, you know, they're needy, but they're like, you know, they'll, they're, you can pet them and they're furry and like, you know, they don't like tear out their feathers when they get depressed. Did you know that? I did know that. And it's weird. I thought you said birds were intelligent. I don't, I don't remember that being in the manual. That's weird. Well, yeah, they get depressed. That's, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Are we as humanity, are we not depressed at all? Because we're intelligent. Oh, no. no, we're, we're fucking depressed as shit. I'm no, I'm highly depressed. I'm saying I don't rip my feathers out because of it. That's a stupid thing to do. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe you don't, but somebody else does. Well, they're probably retarded, so it doesn't, oh my God. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. You're not helping your case. Birds are stupid. All right, they're you're not, not stupid. Them. They're they're very smart. They have the capacity to be depressed, which is both like amazing, but also does not make for good pets. I'm gonna still. I'm no. We're not talking about this dumb bird thing. We're not. Okay, stop, stop. We're not. We're not talking about. It. <laughs> Oh man. Shout out to my friend Molly. Uh I know she loves birds and I love uh making fun of her for it. Yeah, and I make fun of her because she's Irish as well. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Now, okay, this is where it gets good. This is why we're all here. Okay. This is why we're called close encounters of the podcast kind. The reason we are all here is aliens. And this, my friends, <laughs> is the true reason behind these most of these cattle mutilations and to say anything other than that is is closed-minded it it proves your calcification of your pineal gland and you 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 imbecile you 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 wretches don't believe me and you don't believe anything that i've ever said but when the aliens come and they start poking around with your dog and they start ripping the butt out of your out of your cow and you're starting to freak out a little bit who are you gonna call you're gonna call me and i'm gonna <laughs> laugh in your face because you never believed a word that i said is this the part of the episode where i just put you on mute and let you just do your thing yeah you, you could have been you could have muted me already i'm i'm <laughs> look the fact okay there are multiple things here that show aliens do this okay multiple things Tasker. All right. Well, Let's look back at the beginning of the episode when we were talking about the surroundings where the bodies are found, okay? Burn marks in the vegetation, soot on the ground. Clearly, <laughs> clearly something from a, a an unidentified flying object that has burned the surrounding area. Another thing that we can talk about is the fact that there's no blood. And there, there's multiple reasons this could be due to aliens. One, being that they completely vaporize the blood d- during medical experiments. <laughs> Or two, the reason there's no blood surrounding the cow is that because it was taken aboard the ship, these things were done to it on the ship, and then it was dropped elsewhere. So clearly, it was taken It was taken in one place, it had its butt ripped out, and then it was dropped <laughs> in another place. No blood. Okay. How do you feel about that? Well... I feel like it's just as lazy of an explanation as the Satan worshipers, I think, or devil wow. worshipers. <laughs> wow. I think that was just Freudian, just me trying to just make you even more mad. But it's, yeah, I mean, we can all blame all of our problems and all mysterious occurrences to the science fiction because it's easier because, oh, yeah, they just have better technology than us. So obviously that's got to be the answers that's the same fucking reason why our ancestors believed in like that you know when the waves were big it's because the ocean was angry that has nothing to do with this tasker they do have the technology to do this right and look look just because 
it sounds lazy doesn't mean that it's that it's lazy. You have to look at the facts of the situation. Look at all the stuff, the bloodlessness, the missing organs. What are the, they're missing important organs by the way. The genitals are fairly important. I know if mine went missing I'd be a little fucking upset, right? <laughs> they're hard. Did you everything? Did you know for medical experiments and you know that. I know. Well, okay, really briefly, did you know that um uh, I guess if they slice up uh, uh, cow genitals or bowls and then they fry it up, I think they call them like prairie scallops or something like that. Yeah. No, they're called uh, something uh, something oysters. Yeah, prairie oysters. Prairie oysters. Mm, yeah, good stuff. Anyway, <laughs> yes, yeah, whatever. Dude, that has nothing to do with the aliens. That has nothing, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Clever misdirection. It, well, it didn't work, man. I, I Boom, bounced right off me. Look. <laughs> So all these things that we're looking at. Also, do you remember the burn marks surrounding the incisions? Yeah. And do you remember how these incisions and these lacerations were surgically done? Maybe with some kind of laser tool. Weird, right? Isn't that weird to think about? How wouldn't it make more sense if these wounds were cauterized as they were opened like a lightsaber? It's because it was yeah. a laser. Seems kind of convenient. Or I don't know, maybe they just got a knife and just heated it up. Oh, sure. Yeah, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. Get a knife. I'm going to go out to old Mr. Johnson's cow, cattle ranch. I'm going to get it up to 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit somehow, and then I'm going to cut into this cow. Who in their right mind has the time on their hands, even if they're the most demented person on earth? Who would do that? Nobody. Um, <laughs> they say country folk who ain't working. No, look, no, they're working at a farm. That's the problem. They're all working at a farm, so this is all money on, out of their pockets. And there's there's multiple reasons here that I'm looking at. We we discussed a, we've discussed a lot about cattle mutilations, and to believe that anything other than extraterrestrials are at work here is just absolutely negligent to society. So we're missing okay hundreds of these animals in some, in some cases are killed and mutilated overnight, overnight. Who else do you think can do that besides aliens, man? And the, the paralysis paralysis is very common in alien abductions, by the way, they, they obviously have easy ways to do it. Why not do it to these cows when they're trying to harvest organs and different body parts for medical experiments? And what would they have to gain from, from cow organs? What do they have to gain from abducting us? Who knows, man? It's it's it, the exact same thing as when we do it to other animals. We're learning. We're figuring things out, how different different species work. We're trying to look for cures. We're looking for all kinds of stuff by doing this, you know? It's just another form of dissection. But the problem is they don't take the whole animal with them. They they take the animal. They get what they want from it. And then they plop it back down somewhere in the general vicinity of where they got it from because they're nice like that, I guess. Interesting. And uh, I guess you could say there's some credence to it because, uh, well, no, because cow mutilations have been happening since the 1600s. So unless you could say the aliens have been poking at us since then, or probably, I, I mean, I'm sure you believe they've been doing that even longer, right? Yeah. Dude, we've been over this. They've been here for like tens of thousands of years. Some say there's even native. Remember the reptilians? There's a native race of reptilians that were technically here before we were. So we're, they're like the Indians. And, okay, the Native Americans, excuse me. Fucking get off my yeah, back. Yeah. And then there's, <laughs> <laughs> and then there's um, the white people. So in this scenario, the reptilians, the indigenous reptilians, are the Native Americans. And we are the white people coming in and giving them smallpox. But instead of us winning, technically they're winning. That's beside the point. The point is they've been here long before us. They've been doing whatever they want to do to us or the animals here long before we could ever say anything about it. So, of course, in 1600s, if there's a hundred sheep that were found dead and mutilated, it was aliens. Is that is that all? That's what I got. That's what I got right now. I mean, do you have any rebuttals? Do you have any rebuttals that, I mean, you, it might sound like if you, I, if you say owl, I might turn off the podcast. I don't know. Well, man, let's just, let me put it this way. When my keys go missing for a week, I can say I misplaced it or I can say a ghost took it. When shit gets rearranged and I don't know what happened, I could say I could come up with any sort of explanation for it. 
doesn't mean that's what did it. Doesn't mean there's really like, you know, you might conveniently line it up. So the evidence matches up, but that does not prove it. That does not, that just feels like more of a fabricated explanation for something that likely was of this earth. I do agree. It is weird what is happening, but I don't think it is extraterrestrial. I think that is just a, that is a panic response from somebody who wants so bad for this thing to be real that they will latch onto any possible connection with anything that might be sort of, you know, remotely, remotely bizarre. There is a difference between losing your keys and organs and body parts being surgically cut off of animals while the rest of their body has no blood in it. There is a difference. And don't you dare sit there and try to make that fucking comparison. Don't you sit there thinking that you came up with the best argument in the world when you're comparing losing. By the way, you lose your car keys because your room's a goddamn mess. <laughs> that's, that's, see, and that's my explanation. And yeah, I, I could say ghost, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm owning up to it. I'm saying, no, I agree. I am living in organized chaos. And that's why I occasionally lose my shit. And that's, that's an obvious one, though. That's obvious. You're like, okay, it's definitely not ghosts because my room is a mess. This is not as obvious. This is definitely different. It's weird do, and, and it's strange and there's no obvious explanation. But the most obvious one is the fact that intelligent beings, more intelligent than us, are swindling our farmers nationwide, worldwide. I... <sighs> You know what? There could be a plague out there we don't know about. There could be a disease. Like, there are flesh-eating diseases that do exist that might specifically target these organs. There, We don't live there. We've never been farmers. We don't know what it's like on the farm. We don't know what kind of things are out there or what could mutate to cause this sort of shit. Who knows? Maybe they were. it was the first stage of zombie, and it just kind of just stopped. I would believe in that more than I would believe in the alien theory. Don't you think... That if there was a flesh eating disease, that it would probably be picked up. That you think maybe somebody would be like, "Hey, there's a flesh eating disease eating this, eating this, some okay, eating this cattle's body parts in these mm -hmm. in those lab results that I was telling you about." Don't you think they maybe pick up on something like that? Well, maybe the government's trying to cover that up to stop widespread panic because you already saw people lost their shit over mad cow disease and stuff like that, and that was probably one of those when it happened. They were like. Well, we could give them a little bit and we'll see what they do. But like this thing is literally a it is a disease that eats your asshole to non-existence. No, it's a panic. Their asshole was cored out by a machine. <laughs> it's, it's, too precise. it's too precise for a flesh eating disease. These cuts are literally scalpel like it doesn't make well, any sense for it to be a flesh eating disease. You sound like a uh, government chill. <laughs> and you sound like a fucking sweaty crackpot. <laughs> oh, I am sweaty, dude. It's hotter than hell in here. I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> okay, well, look, look Tasker, that was, I, that was my part on the aliens. That's all I wanted to say. I wanted to point out, I know that there are dozens of people out there that will agree with me. And there are some people out there that will agree with you. And that's why we do this is because there's two sides to every coin, right? It's like Dr. Phil always says, no matter how flat a pancake is, it's always going to have two sides. You know what I mean? There's always two sides. Some will agree with me. Some will agree with you. But I just want you to open up your mind to this a little bit more. You got a long ways to go, man. You got a lot of, lot of marble to chip through before you find your statue of David. Because I am standing heavy on my side that all of that is complete bullshit. All right, and I'm obviously going with the side that it's not bullshit, and I'm saying that it's aliens. And I'm sure people out there will agree if you if you fit, look. That's all I have. I, I don't want to get. To, I'm getting frustrated. I'm sweaty. It's hot in here. So I'm, yeah, you look I'm, visibly frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm ending the. I'm I'm ending the outline. I'm done. That's all I have. For cattle mutilation. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, the details. I didn't go into too much detail. Remember, I'm trying to save. I know that a couple of our listeners um, also have their children listening. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I apologize ahead of time about, or, you know, anything that we may have said on this episode. And, um, you know, we'd stay in school. Don't do drugs. Yep. We do have that explicit tag, though. So you can't really legally do anything to us. So um, <laughs> nice no. try. <laughs> I think they enjoy it. But yeah, that was cattle mutilation. So thank you guys for listening. I was very happy with this. This is a great subject for me. So thank you.
Yeah, thank you all. And it's been great with some of the uh, audience interaction we've had these past couple of days. We love your comments. We love replying to them. If you have anything you want to say, hit us up on that Facebook. Um, you can hit us up on, well, you know, I do my usual spiel. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder that um, Count Chocula is still in the works. You know, we're typing away like crazy. Like I said, I'm working on a gig right now. I'm trying to make my, I haven't showered in days. And I don't know, Nick, if you can see the the the, the glistening grease on my shining bald forehead. Well, here's the thing about that tasker is um I'm a i I'm a couple states away from you on FaceTime and I can smell you. So <laughs> it's pretty impressive. And it's it just smells like uh like old like if if old spice and Irish spring were mixed together in motor oil and then you just took a shit on it. Yeah, and put some taco seasoning in there for a little flavor. <laughs> a little spice, yeah. That, that's that's about approximately what we're dealing with right here. So um, if you can smell me too, um, but hopefully in the next hour or two, that won't be a problem. Yeah, exactly. But I, I I know where you're going with this. You haven't had a lot of time to work on the Count Chocula episode because of your gig, and I get it. Um, I've been taking over the reins on the research for that portion. Looking at old pictures of the cereal boxes, um, I did find some mysterious symbolism um, hidden throughout the the the. Uh, cereal boxes like in the artwork um Mm -hmm. one of them i did see on the side panel just underneath the nutritional facts there is a swastika um which is not surprising right yeah at this point on it's crazy how desensitized we've become after all this yeah like i'm not surprised anymore with the things that i find out about count chocula like the swastikas and also like there's like an um, invisible ink on the on the cereal boxes that if you put lemon juice on the the box you can see what it says and um from the charles manson family murders of sharon tate and 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 company um that the helter skelter that was on the wall and stuff there's a direct replica of that on the on the cereal box in in invisible ink so that's actually something else i found too yikes oh geez you think with all this bullshit you think count chocolate would be the type to be into deep sea cum diving yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure that's what he's doing right now. He's covering himself and come and jumping in the water just to see what he can catch. <laughs> well, hopefully with when this episode comes out, we'll catch him sooner than later because this shit needs to stop. It's just it's not OK. It's putting us all in danger. Yep, exactly. So just know that we're working on it. We're trying to figure out things um, with this episode without getting in too much hot shit. So stay tuned. We're going to get it up as soon as we can. Yeah, we're definitely getting better at, you know, diving and covering our tracks. You know, we were we're amateurs at the beginning, but now we mm. feel we're a little bit more qualified. But until then, um, please rate and review on iTunes. Hit us a five star. A couple kind words our way would be extremely helpful. Uh, I have noticed recently we have gotten an influx of reviews and that feels very awesome. Thank you guys yeah. for that support. Um, like we said, anything helps, anything to kind of boost us up there a little bit more and help grow our community a little bit. Um, Spotify, you can hit us with a follow. That would be amazing. You'll be updated on every Wednesday whenever we have new episodes. Instagram, we have at CEOTPK. Twitter, at CEOTPK1. Facebook, you can find us on Close Encounters of the Podcast Kind. Feel free to please leave us a comment. Leave us just any, whatever you want. Um, We try to read all of them. And for all you who've been posting there, it's been very fun. We love talking with you. Yes. Uh, or if you want a more private sector, we have email CEOTPK1 at gmail.com. Um, if you want more of like a live setting away from Facebook and everything, we have a Discord, discord.gg slash lowercase b number six, capital T. Ugh, fuck. Every, that's three, that's three I fucked up in the 30 some episodes we've done. But I, that's, a, that's not a bad track record. Not bad. No, it, it's, it's, it is burdensome to have to read that Discord URL out. So I don't blame you. It's fine. Yeah, so I'll try it one more time. Discord.gg slash lowercase b, number six, capital C, capital T, number five, capital M, capital X. If you feel any sort of need to throw any dollars our way, we do have an avenue for that too. It is coffee, ko slash fi.com slash ceotpk. Anything would be super appreciated, and um, we'll probably shout your name out too. Yeah, and like guys, thank you for, you know, we've been getting a little bit more traction. Uh, people are spreading the word and we really appreciate all the listeners out there. Um, you know, it's something that we've been wanting to do for a long time. It's something that we've been doing and you guys seem to like it. So thank you for sticking with us and thank you for putting up with our bullshit. 
um, means a lot, honestly. And thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we honestly could not be more grateful, especially with the outreach. It just it really warms the cockles of our hearts. <laughs> nice, nice choice of words, Tasker. Oh, thank you. It, it, cockles is a real word, by the way. I'm sure it is. That's what I called my dog, and then he died. So now I'm never naming them cockles again. So, um, <laughs> but really quick, That's folks, a shame. yeah, it's a shame. Um, remember, whether you like your steak medium, medium rare, but if you go anything over medium. Just know that first off, that's sacrilege. And second off, um, just remember, the truth is out there. Yeah, the truth is definitely, yeah. If, you, if, you're, if your steak is gray, uh, what the hell? What the hell? But also realize that um, that whole truth bullshit nonsense, this whole, it's, it's not. It's not. Remember, man, uh, thick thighs save lives, but thigh highs are my demise. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs>